Hey guys, how are you? So I'm going to read a comment here and then I'll comment on the comment and give you some insight into the comment. All right, to give you a more truthful picture of the job market for devs, you should look at the ratio between junior versus senior roles. There are approximately 40 to 50 times more demand for senior talent. I don't know where it gets that data from. Anyhow, that would cover the vast majority of in the job market or of the job market. It's hard to fill those roles and therefore there's plenty of demand. I don't know if he's super accurate or not with those numbers. I, I suspect otherwise. But uh, that said, common sense tells you that if you are experienced, the chance of getting any job, whether it be software development or plumbing or uh, being a lawyer, or whatever, of course, are far better. So the key to getting a job as a developer is to get some skills. Now, some people say, well, that's a bit of a oxy, not an oxymoron, a catch-22, right? How do you get that job that requires experience if you can't get a job to build that experience? Well, I give a strategy. I talk about it all the time. Once you get your fundamentals down, you go out there and you do two to three small projects for free, little projects, two weeks, three weeks long, one week long, for real companies, real people. Not doing tutorials, not doing Udemy courses, etc. I'm talking about real projects, super important. Now, for a lot of people, to go from doing tutorials and to make that leap into actually production code is difficult for them. And uh, for a few reasons. Number one, they're not trained, right? Writing code, ironically, is not just about writing code. You see, development has much more than code to it, really. It has a lot more to do with planning things out, structuring things, figuring out the best solutions. As you know, if you're in development, there's many ways to skin a cat. Uh, so when you're going to skin the cat, you better skin it properly. So you got to know what the options are out there. That's where strong fundamentals come into play. So yes, if you're having trouble bridging that gap from being a tutorial uh, junkie, jumping into the game, you just got to jump into that game. You got to jump in and figure things out. That's why I'll pivot a little bit. That's why I don't think chat GPT or any, a, any other AI uh, tool is going to replace developers anytime, too, anytime soon. Yes, if you look at chat GPT, I just did a couple of videos on them. They, uh, it's powerful. It could generate a lot. But first of all, a lot of code is, sometimes it codes no good. Um, also, Anybody who's experienced developer knows that the coding aspect of the job is, is really not the hard part of the job. Now, that's why a lot of beginners, when they look at chat GPT, a lot of non-coders, when they look at chat GPT and other AI tools, they freak out and they have kittens and they have nervous breakdowns that the whole thing is over. That's because they're not professional developers. Anybody tells you that ChatGPT GPT in, its in, in its current incarnation and foreseeable future is going to somehow replace developers is, uh, is you're listening to the opinions of people who are not professional developers, in my humble opinion. Any professional developer knows a big part of the job has nothing to do with or it's detached from writing the code. The code is a tool to execute on the job. If you're a great programmer, and you know your way around JavaScript, its quirks and so forth, and it, the environment in which JavaScript exists in, uh, whether it's server side or client side, with those skills, you'll be able to optim you optimally use the language to achieve your goals. But the same thing goes for any language. And that's why I keep telling people the language is not that important because just about, let me, let me step back back. The language is not that important objectively. The language is only important subjectively based on the particular project you happen to be working on and your personal likes and dislikes. So for example, um, I find certain things in Python superior to JavaScript in, in the way they are executed, but I find other things in JavaScript superior. For example, I don't like the way they do uh, uh, code delineation, they, they create code blocks with white space and carriage returns in Python. I just don't like that. Now, you can mitigate for that with good integrated development environments, which show you that. I prefer curly braces. But that's just a personal preference. It's not a universality. Some people prefer the other way. Going back to jobs and uh, software, yeah, if you're experienced, of course, you get a lot more opportunity there. There's no question. But how do you get that experience? I just gave you the, the, the key, right? You got to get just do the first two to three jobs. You got to understand. 
once you've learned your fundamentals, once you understand the basics of putting out a software, you want to get into that ring and start learning as you get paid. Now, when you start off as a junior developer, you're not going to get paid the six-figure salary right away. Stands the reason, right? You're, you're not worth it at that point. You're not as productive. You're making more mistakes. You're, anyway, so that's okay. You have to consider the first job, at least, the first year as the last stage of the learning process. You got to remember that. The fir your first job is the last stage of the learning process. A lot of people don't expect that. They expect that they're going to learn how to code, uh, take two, two $20 courses, and then they're going to get a job working at Microsoft. Don't do that. That's another one of the reasons why people have trouble finding jobs is because they do two courses for 20 bucks, and uh, they, they copy some code from a tutorial, and then they try to apply to Microsoft. That's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It would be like if you uh, you did uh, you know a couple of boxing tutorials on YouTube, and then you wanted to step in the ring, fight for the title with Mike Tyson. It's silly, right? It's 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 crazy. You don't you want to start easy. So again, remember that if you're getting discouraged, once you know your fundamentals, what does that mean? If in the web development, which I think to me is the is the best choice for most people because it offers the broadest range of job opportunities and the broadest range of, uh, of uh, programming opportunities. You can do visual programming, you can do detailed back-end model programming, and so on and so forth. Anyway, you get into WebStack, you learn your fundamentals, which means you understand the, the uh, HTTP, you understand the request response model, which means servers and clients. You understand how to get a site live, a web app live. You understand web app versus web website. You understand those distinctions. You can hook into basic APIs. You can do a bit of CRUD operations. You're ready to go. Are you an expert? No. Are you a senior developer going to make 100K? No. But you're ready to get in the job, and that job is the last stage of the learning process. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. You can check me out at UncleSteph.com. I am a developer mentor. I've been coding since 1994. I have my own SaaS products, including Studio Web, which is still used today by many schools around the world. So in my mentoring program slash bootcamp, it's very different from anybody else's out there because I not only teach you how to be a professional developer from zero, but I also have CTOs in the program. I have people with 10, 15, 20 years experience in the program because I also teach you how to get a job, how to, tra how to transition from a traditional job to freelancing, how to start a startup, how to uh, build your career. I teach soft skills, job getting skills, resume. I teach you finance when you start making all that developer money. What do you do with it? How do you invest it? What do you do to extricate yourself from the rat race? Um, I put it all in there. Essentially, you know, I'm an old guy, well, middle-aged. I'm a middle-aged guy, much older than you probably. So instead of you having to spend 15, 20 years figuring all this stuff out, you can get it from me in a fraction of the time. It's entirely up to you. All right, once again, you can check me out at UncleSteph.com. That is the end of my shameless self-promotion. Cheers.